Hi, I'm Dave Ferguson, lead pastor of Community, and I want to welcome you to Romeoville. This is one of our 14 locations in Chicagoland, both city and suburbs. And I want to say a special welcome to our two brand new locations, Community in the Lincoln Park neighborhood of the city, and also Community in suburban Glen Ellen. You're both off to a great start. And uh, now that it's December, I also want to be the first to say to you, Merry Christmas to all of Community. In fact, I'll tell you what, uh, since it is December, go ahead and turn to someone near you right now and just say, Merry Christmas. All right, I love being here at Community in Romeville. And part of the reason is because this is a place of one of our greatest adventures as a church movement. This was the place where we first began to reproduce churches. And while reproducing new sites, that's pretty routine for us now, before we came here to Romeoville, we'd never done it before. And neither had almost any other church in the country. So doing this was a huge, huge adventure for us. And at the same time, whenever I'm here, I also think about a friend of mine and his adventure. And it was an adventure really from darkness to light, an adventure from really kind of extreme anxiety to genuine hope. And his adventure actually led to the start of the church in this location. In many ways, the birth of our community became a multi-site church. When we first met, he would tell you that he could like, feel the darkness creeping in around him. While he was very successful in business, he was tremendously anxious about his most important relationships in his life because they were just falling apart. He was worried about what he had done to his marriage. He was worried about what had happened, the ramifications to his kids because of that. Would he be able to save his marriage and his family? In kind of an anxious fury of desperation, he did everything he could on his own to kind of fight off the darkness and save his relationships. Nothing seemed to be working. And then one day, while he was sitting in the office of a, a secular counselor that he was seeing, the counselor told him, well, well, maybe what you need is to get some kind of spirituality in your life. Well, he'd given everything else a try. So what he did is he joined a good friend, also a business partner of his, and he came to community. And that's when we met. I invited him to join my small group, and then over the next several months, we went on a tremendous adventure together. We began to study the Gospel of John, and, and actually we started... Right in, uh, right in John chapter 1. And uh, here's what it said. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I love that phrase. The light shining in the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. Because that light is Jesus who came into our dark world on Christmas some 2,000 years ago. And I want that phrase just to stick with you. The light shining into the darkness and the darkness could not overcome it. Because this Christmas, despite the we wish you a Merry Christmas and the joy of the world, I know for many of us, it can be a dark season. My friend I was telling you about, it was some of these very words right out of, out of John about Jesus being the light that took him on an adventure of his own from real anxiousness into a place of genuine hope. And ultimately, his marriage was saved. His family was saved. In fact, he was saved. I got the opportunity to baptize both him and his wife, and it was just an amazing adventure. When he became a follower of Jesus, though, he didn't just kind of join a church. He joined a community with a cause. He was ready to share the light of Jesus, that light shining in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. I remember him asking me, him saying, Dave, this, this experience of, of, uh, that I've had in this small group, how can I share that with all the people who, who are in the properties that I'm developing across the country? That took us on another adventure. He was a real estate de developer. The next property they developed was right here in Romeoville. It's called High Point. It's really uh, kind of an amazing place. And it was designed so that the community center would actually be the home to our church so that we could be a light to every person in this community. And that's one of the reasons I love being here. I love that story. And I love seeing the light of Jesus spread. We're starting a brand new series today. It's the kind of series that's going to take you on really several adventures. Because this Christmas, we don't want it just to be a, a season of Advent, but a season of adventure. Next week, we're going to talk about the adventure from bitterness to love. Some of us come into this season angry, disappointed, even bitter at the way life is going. It should have been so much different by now. But there's a light that can overcome the darkness and show us love. Two weeks from now, we're going to talk about the adventure from sorrow to joy. 
This time of year can also bring with it uh, grief and sorrow, missed loved ones, or just the feeling we're missing out on life. But there's a light that can overcome the darkness and can give you joy. Three weeks from now, we're going to talk about the adventure from conflict to peace. Christmas is not necessarily always peace on earth and goodwill to men. It's often a time we're forced to spend time with some of the people who are the most difficult in our lives. But there's a light that can overcome the darkness and bring peace. And then on Christmas Eve, it's kind of the culmination of our adventure series. The adventure from darkness to light, where we celebrate the coming of Jesus, the light that overcame all darkness. And it's a great time for you to invite a friend. In fact, more people show up on Christmas Eve for the first time or come back to church than any other time of the year. But today, today's adventure takes us from anxiety to hope. Winter's almost here. Days are growing shorter and the nights longer. Calendar says Christmas is coming. But for so many of us, our hearts tell a different story. A season that should be full of hope it brings nothing but anxiety. Worries about how we're gonna have gifts under the tree and still keep the lights on. Feelings of being underappreciated, used, bitter from a thankless season of serving others. Another holiday separated from someone we love. Our families are full of conflict and peace on earth feels a million miles away. If you're anything like me, and Christmas has lost its adventure, I need to remember the words of John. The true light, which would bring light to everyone, is coming into the world. Christmas is not reserved for the saints, but instead, it's a calling to the advent of Christ. It's a season marking the turning of anxiety into hope, bitterness into love, of sorrow into joy, of conflict into peace, and of darkness into light. Join us at Community this Christmas for adventure. Rachel, I want to say thanks for, uh, for joining us. And I know uh, right here, Community Romeoville, this is your home. Yep. Our big idea of the adventure from anxiety to hope, um, it's really, that's not, it's not just like a big idea for you. I mean, it's been a part of your experience and really a, a big part of, of kind of your story. So maybe you could just start by describing what was the source kind of of your anxiety? My anxiety t tended to come from two different areas. Uh, the first was just kind of having this sense of um, not being good enough that it just really hounded me for a long time. I know now that that really stems from, uh, some, from some abuse that was in my past. And um, with abuse, it's, uh, it plays out, you know, even, you know, a long time later with just a lot of shame. And so that sense of being not good enough is really part of, part of that shame. And rather than getting stuck kind of in that anxiety and in that dark place, you went on a search. Hmm. Um, where did that search take you? Probably the first place it took me to was religion. And I'll, I'll say religion hmm. because it was, not, it was not here in community Christian church. This was, you know, before, before I came here. But what I learned at that time was to live a set of rules. And, um, you know, if I could just, you know, toe the line here, then, you know, then I'd be on God's good side. How did that go for you? It did not go well because yeah. I am human, unfortunately. Welcome and, to the club. <laughs> and, you know, as humans, we mess up. I messed up. I failed. You know, what I, what I ended up doing was creating a facade. You know, creating, there's these two sides of me. There's what's going on on the inside, and there's what's going on on the outside. About that time, um, <clears throat> this is about ten, maybe 10 years ago, I had a miscarriage. And um, I lost my twin babies, my two twin babies. And, uh, you know, not too long after that, I, um, my marriage ended. 
and uh, I felt like I was I was failing as a as a wife, and then I felt like I had failed my children because the uh, the pregnancy didn't last. And, and so, I mean. In some ways, even though it was like there was no real rational connection between that no, no. and what happened, you still it still kind of got reinforced that lie. I'm going, yeah. like, okay, I'm a, well, somehow I'm a failure. With all of my not good enough that I had going on the inside, I looked at it and I saw I failed. Yeah. So there was kind of a breaking point for you that actually happened kind of here at Community. There was kind of a moment, I think, for you when you said, okay, this is, I can't keep living like this. Mm -hmm. can, can you kind of tell us that story? <laughs> yes. Well, I was singing here. And I was actually singing here in Romeoville. And um, they had uh, scheduled the song called Fix You by Coldplay. And it just seemed like every line represented some very difficult experience that I had been through. It forced me to get to a place where I couldn't hide anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the cracks in the facade were there. And they were getting wider and wider. and. There was just no keeping this brokenness inside. Uh, there was a decision made not long after that, and I think that you said that was kind of a catalyst for that, to really begin to reach out mm -hmm. and kind of the hope against what felt like something that was hopeless. What did yeah. you do? I went to see the J to celebrate the journey, and a lot of times it's, it just, it's like, wow, this is bigger than me. This is more than I can handle. So being in this environment with other people who are going through the same things, you know, that at least the same kinds of things and the same kinds of feelings, so, and so in that space, earlier on, you're one thing on the outside, you're something different on the inside. In that community. I could be real. I could be honest. And I don't have to have the two sides. Because when you feel, or at least when I felt, broken to the point of can't be repaired, then what I needed was to be made new, hmm. you know, to be made over. And that's what I got in my relationship with Jesus was, you know, he shines his light of truth on the situation. And then it's like, oh, well, if I'm made new, that really gives me some hope yeah. for the future. Right. You know, maybe there, maybe, maybe there is hope. I wanted Rachel to share with you her story because I know there's so many of you that need to take that same adventure this Christmas from a place of anxiety and despair to a place of just real hope. It was a guy named John who knew Jesus probably better than anyone on earth. And he said this about Jesus, that he's the light of all mankind, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now what you might miss, but was clear to the first readers of John's gospel, is that John's clearly saying Jesus is God. He's intentionally using the same language as the prophet Isaiah, who prophesied, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. He's talking about Jesus. Just like Rachel, he's saying that Jesus is God. And he's a light for all of us who are walking in darkness. So what does it specifically mean for Jesus to become our light? Well, first of all, light offers direction. In Jesus' day, when it got dark at night, I mean, it was dark, real dark, pitch black dark. Uh, there were no street lights, no city lights, no flashing headlights. I mean, just darkness. So once it got dark, you didn't go anywhere because unless it was by the light of the moon, you couldn't see anything. But maybe the light of a lantern or the light of a torch, they would be the source of light that could provide enough light to give you direction in the darkness. And that's what a light can do. It gives us direction. And for many of us, you can relate to uh, all or, or certainly parts of Rachel's story. Uh, the worry, uh, the shame, uh, the facade, the hiding of things, the despair. Jesus is the light in the middle of all that darkness that will give you guidance and give you direction. In much the same way that the light from the Christmas star shone brighter than all the rest and guided those first wise men, if you will allow him, Jesus, through the power of his spirit, he'll come inside you and he'll guide you. He wants to direct you during your darkest of times. He can give you guidance. He can give you direction. Guidance and direction during the darkest of times. So, so light offers us direction, but it also offers us protection. The desert wilderness of Israel was, it was a tough and, and not a very hospitable place. Uh, during the day, the heat would parch your throat and boil your skin. And at night, the darkness was sometimes so cold it could be equally dangerous. 
the darkness brought with it real dangers, dangers like robbers and thieves or uh, even animals who, who, who wouldn't keep their distance by day, who would keep their distance by day but not at night. So the light of a fire would actually provide warmth and provide protection from those thieves and, and wild predators. When we go through those seasons of anxiety, when we, we feel like we're not worthy, that we have something we have to hide, actually hiding who we really are, we're vulnerable to predators. We're vulnerable to predatory people who will take advantage of us. We're vulnerable to the predator of bad choices that sometimes seem so right. And what the light of Jesus and his people will do is it actually will protect us. When we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we know he's with us. In fact, Jesus even promised in his own words, he said, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. His light will protect you. It gives you direction, it gives you protection, but thirdly, it also offers us encouragement. When John wrote those words about Jesus, that he's the light of all mankind, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, Perhaps the most common image of light was the light of a fire. Uh, maybe in particular, kind of like a, a campfire. And a campfire would be a safe place. And not just for one, but for all to come and gather. In the middle of a cold, dark, directionless, dangerous night, a fire would become a place where people could gather and also find other people. They would come together as a community. I think that's exactly what Jesus had in mind we designed the church, that we would be a place that we'd come together as a community, as it describes in 2 Corinthians 2. And it says this, Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So what we do is we gather together to comfort and also encourage one another. I guess that's what Jesus meant when he said, you are the light of the world. You see, when the light of Jesus comes to live inside us, not only is he our light, but together, as his church, we become the light. A light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. Savior is born.